Hello, this is Mark from Miami and Organic, and welcome to part 7 of Back to Eden versus Fall Leaves. I'm standing at the top of the row. Uh, looking forward here is 15 of yellow squash and 15 of green squash or zucchini. Uh, the varieties are the same as planted in leaves in the same amount. And we're just going to compare, because it's been about 30 days, they were planted in the beginning of June. And we just want to see what the comparison is now between what's growing in the wood chips and what's growing in the leaves. Things are looking very good. We have some nice amount of flowers, male and female flowering. And it's only been about 30 days since we did a transplant out here from a, a pot, a four inch pot that we grew the seeds in. Then we transplant out here. But things are looking very nice and very healthy. I'm at the end where the squash, the yellow squash ends and the zucchini begins. And they look pretty even. Towards the front of the row, they're a little bit shorter but I think that will uh, work out over time. I think that area was just a little bit too wet and that was, uh, slows things down sometimes when the ground is too wet. Here we have some nice yellow squash being produced. This time last year, uh, I would open my store up on July 1st, which is tomorrow. And basically I would probably have about 30 to 40 squash, yellow squash available to sell. Now, uh, things are very behind this year, but at least they're turning healthy and they're looking a lot better than they did, say a couple weeks ago. And we finally got rain. We uh, haven't had rain in about three weeks. Here we have our 15 zucchini plants, and we're going to take a closer look at that. Uh, you can tell the zucchini apart from the squash by just the leaf. The leaf usually has a nice uh, white uh, design to it. Here we have our zucchini plant, and it's producing also. I see two of them on there, and looking healthy. No squash bugs, no disease yet, and so far so good. I just took a walk to the end of the row and we're looking back up towards the top of the row again and things look very uniform and nice and healthy and upright and I see some bumblebees around uh, helping the pollination and we're going to go take a walk in the leaves now and see how uh, the same varieties are doing there. So here we are in the leaves at the top of the row. I hope you can see the uh, yellow squash plants. It's not weeds around here. This is all field peas that are growing up. And there's some clover in there, some chickling vetch, and some uh, winter rye that I put in as a cover crop because I know it grows very well inside the leaves. It's not in the soil. Basically the seed just, the leaves are, uh, let's say, eight inches thick right now. The seed goes down about, say, two to three inches in the leaves and it will root and then will grow pretty much all summer. Now, for example, right down the row, if you can see the row here, we have sunflowers on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the squash plants. And that's adding, um, hopefully building soil and adding mycorrhizal fungi at a high level in the soil again. So we have these beautiful squash plants and we're going to take a better look at them and we're gonna get closer up so you have a very good idea and they look very healthy. The yellow squash is pretty uniform. Uh, it's a nice sized plant. It's kind of hard to determine if it's bigger or better than what's in the wood chips, but I'm gonna say it's at least the same or maybe a little bit better for the reason why is because you have so much other stuff growing around it and it looks just larger because it's basically confined more. Um, but we'll see uh, in another, say, 30 days when I start harvesting and keeping count of things, how much comes off of each row. I also want to point out another interesting thing here too. The sunflowers that I planted, I also planted the same amount of sunflowers also in the wood chips in the back to Eden. But unfortunately we had a family of groundhogs, about uh, five of them, that were eating them all the time. And they didn't get to these because I guess they were filling up on those over there. But anyway, the sunflowers here are doing amazing well and also too that's not planted in soil these seeds were basically just again too dropped down into the leaf mold about two inches deep and just uh, grew on their own and again they're doing extremely well and then in the background over here by the trellis I put up if I can move the camera here 
we have more sunflowers behind the trellis and they're doing extremely well and they were planted at the same time. But those leaves were more decomposed and you can see the difference about the sunflowers in the background behind the trellis here, how much they rooted in the ground a little bit better or was able to uh, support themselves or be stronger. They were planted at the same time, simple the fact that the leaves were decomposed a little bit more. I'm gonna to try to walk up very slowly here so you can see the yellow squashes inside the field piece. What's nice about this is that you have a lot of beneficial insects in here also too. And that's, I believe, is helping the squash plants and also is that they look a lot healthier than the ones in the wood chips. For the simple reason is this, this is the way nature pretty much has it. Wood chips are great, don't get me wrong, I love the wood chips and I love the back to Eden method. But this is how really nature grows things um, in, the, in a natural setting all the time. It is combined with other plants and looks healthy and they do not starve nutrients from each other. And I will explain that further to you. And here I am looking at our first zucchini at the uh, beginning of the row. We just passed up the yellow squash and we have 15 zucchini plants here. Again, they're the same variety as the ones that are in the wood chips. Uh, we have lots of field peas growing around it. It's not starving anything from it and it's looking good. The field peas are just adding or taking that beautiful sunlight and feeding the microorganisms in the soil and making everything healthy. The more roots you have in the ground, the better off you are in the garden because those plants are feeding the soil. Plants build soil. That's the most important thing. And they do that by feeding the soil food web. So here we are at the end of the row. This is my last zucchini plant and it's the largest out of them all. But what's really sad about that is the one right in front of it here, this little guy isn't doing well. And I think the simple reason is is that we have uh, too much shading from the field piece. They just grew too quick and it was not allowing that plant to grow as well. So we're gonna come out here and uh, give things a little bit of a haircut and knock it down a little bit. We're just gonna trim the tops off of the field piece. We're gonna leave the roots there so it can still uh, add things to the soil food web. But you can see just the difference between, oh, I think it's not even, it's about three feet apart here. The difference between the two, how, large one is here and just three feet away you have a small little one here tucked away and is not doing that well that's a, that's the same it's the same variety it's just not doing well but we're going to explore a little bit more with my new tool that I got and I'm going to uh, take a little soil sample and I will show you so now you can see our zucchini plant. I pushed some of the field peas out of the way and the winter rye and the crimson clover. Now we are just gonna take a sample of soil around the base and I will show you my new uh, garden tool. I'm just gonna take a clean plastic spoon and dig away here. Get down, I see the roots. That looks good. And we'll just get a nice sample here. in the bag, take a little bit deeper, and we'll get some more. Okay, now we're all set, and I will show you the new garden tool. Now you can see here we have the same uh, sunflower seeds that was in the other two rows. These grew a little bit bigger because the leaves were a little bit more decomposed. So I'm assuming they are able to uh, tap into more nutrients a little bit earlier and have that soil food web working for them. Now also what we're gonna do over here is this set of sunflowers, a larger one on the right hand side. We're gonna pull that up and we're gonna see what the roots look like on it. 
So there's two sunflowers that are pretty close together, but I'm going to grab them both and we're going to see how extensive the root system is. Uh, hopefully I won't break off too many roots and then you'll see that it's just growing in pure leaf mold and not soil and this is how it's surviving. And I'm a big advocate of planting sunflowers in your garden because it is a huge benefit of getting mycorrhizal fungi to your plant roots or to harbor it to expand it into the soil food web to get to your other plants and make them healthy. All right, let me see if I can pull these out. Wow. It's... <laughs> Here we go. That's a pretty good root system. Now you can see that it went all through the leaves. That's not dirt right there. That is just beautiful roots growing right inside leaf mold and is probably helping the soil food web as much as possible. But I will uh, learn how to detect that and show you also too with my new garden tool um, how it is helping the soil food web. So I took a walk back and I'm inside my farmhouse and this is my Number one new garden tool. Nice. So let's hook it up to the computer and see what we can find in the soil. So I'm gonna prepare my soil sample right now. So the colander in front of you has nine milliliters of water in it and I'm gonna add one milliliter of soil to it. And then I have a little pipette on the right hand side and the glass sides in the back. And after shaking it for about a minute slowly, we're going to draw just one drop and put it onto the glass slide. So let me add my soil sample. A little bit more. Okay. Now we're just going to Shake it like this for a little bit, up to a minute, and I'll be right back. So it's been about a minute, and we're gonna let everything settle. So now we just take a clean glass slide, lay it down. Now we take our little pipette, which is like a, just a little vacuum tube on top that you squeeze in. It's like an eyedropper. And you go down there, grab up a sample, and you only just want one drop. And that's it. Take our little glass cover, drop it right on top. Don't touch it like it almost did. And we're all set for the microscope. So here we have our microscope. We're just going to put our sample in. Lock it down and turn the light on. And now we'll bring it into focus. Now I have everything in focus and I want you to see what I'm seeing. So I'm going to remove one of the eyepieces slowly and I'm going to take the camera, take the cover off and just place it right back in ever so gently and you can see what I see. And here it is, a beautiful amazing soil food web. So let's see what we can find. Okay, so the camera is on that I installed, and we're going to enlarge this picture. It's going to take a little, a couple seconds for the camera to focus in. Not the camera that I'm clicking on, but the, the camera, the video camera that you're watching. Now, this is at 100 times magnification. Now, the little, like this is probably a sand particle here, and the other little tiniest little particles are probably clay particles, and this is organic matter up in this corner where the little uh, symbol of hand is. This is the edge of the little glass strip that I put on. This is the slide down here, and this is just the edge. You always want to look at the edge when you're looking at the microscope, because that's where everything pretty much swims to, the soil food web. So now we're going to switch it over to 400 magnification, and it's going to take a while, and there's life. That's the soil food web working. 
the little guys moving around here, these are one cell bacteria. And you can't see it, but it has a little bit of a tail on it. And that's where it makes it swim around. Now, what's going on here? This piece here is probably left over of a fungus, uh, a fungus hyphae, like a fungus root. So I know I have fungus in the soil working. So that's something interesting. And then this guy down here is eating a bacteria. I don't know what the name of that is yet, but when he eats that one single cell bacteria, whatever nutrients is in that bacteria that just ate something, he's going to eat that, receive his nutrition to stay alive, and then all of a sudden poop it out, and then that becomes the plant available nutrition to the plant. That's how the soil food web works. Okay, if I'm going to say this right, it's a ciliate. One of the large protozoas and the least numerous. They consume up to 10,000 bacteria a day and release plant available nitrogen. Ciliates are used the fine cilia along their bodies like ores to move rapidly through the soil. Interesting, but that's it right there. Just to go over what we just looked at, this is a picture of the one cell bacteria and there's millions of them in the soil. Now this moves around with this tail and feeds off of things in the soil but this guy the protozoa is the predator and then will come in and eat those bacteria like we saw and then release nitrogen to the plant. The plant sends signals out when it's low on nitrogen um, and it's always in constant contact with the soil. It sends out sugars and enzymes and then attracts these bacteria to the plant roots area. And then when they go to the plant roots area, the protozoas, these, follow along and then start eating them, thus releasing nitrogen to the plant. So the plant has full nitrogen capability all the time of getting the right nitrogen that it needs uh, from the soil or from the soil food web. So there's no reason to ever really to add nitrogen for your soil if everything is working properly. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a blast making it. There's a lot that I have to learn and the more I learn the more I'm going to share with you of course. And if you haven't done so please subscribe and I thank you always for watching. Thanks.